Let's talk about last week's news. Let's talk about this week's news. And let's talk about how this all comes together in terms of volatility in the market. So last week's news, if you remember, and we go back to last weekend, right? We had the attempted assassination on former President Trump. We had, um, again, um, uh, after that, just two days later, the RNC started, right? And then, so that was on Monday. On Thursday, former President Trump delivered his remarks at the RNC. And, of course, that was before the weekend we just got, came out of. Um, I think the news that we saw was building up. We saw a buildup of news. Uh, and the big question was, it went from, was President Biden going to drop out of the 2024 race? And it went from, from of if to when. And our sources told us that it was a when. And the expectation was, the expectation was it was going to happen earlier. But Jill Biden was one of the biggest reasons that we believe that uh, Joe Biden stayed in the race. Okay, so here we fast forward to Sunday, and that was just this 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 coming Sunday that um, President Biden made a decision and told his senior staff, and then one minute later it was put on X that he was dropping out of the presidential race. Uh, momentarily after that, he then endorsed his vice president, and so we're starting to see more and more of um, there was a concern that this was going to be an open uh, that there, this was going to be an open convention in Chicago. But there are more and more delegates and more and more endorsements coming out for Kamala Harris. So we'll see where that ends up going. But the the, the two things I want to talk about is a one of the ways that you can get these predictions and get them and, and get them in not so much hearsay, but where I think the best predictors are, and that's money, and B, what the market volatility has to say about that. So let's talk about the money, all right? And the money is in predictable uh, outcomes. Coming into the weekend, there was a 75% chance based on poly market that President Biden was going to exit the race prior to the convention. And of course, that outcome has now happened. So I th thought I'd show you three new outcomes. I actually have this on my iPhone. So you can find these on, there's apps you can find. Uh, actually, no, I actually uh, went to polymarket.com to get this. So you can get this anywhere. But um, I pulled it up on my iPhone this morning. And there are three things I wanted to share with you to, sh to show you how polymarket comes. So right now there's 20, almost $24 million that is uh, being floated to um, the Democratic nominee for 2024. Right now, Kamala Harris has an 83% odds on yes, all right, that yes, she will be the Democratic nominee. Michelle Obama actually comes in second. That's how far away this is. So 83 and 8, that puts us at around uh, 91%. That means there's 9% that's going into other Democratic uh, nominees. But Kamala Harris is odds on favorite. And so what's happening, people are betting on these. So if you were betting on Kamala Harris, you would be betting 83.6 cents right now to make a dollar, which means you're, you're only going to profit the difference between 100 minus 83.6. Right now, if you were betting on Michelle Obama, you're basically betting eight cents to make a dollar. That's how this works. And then you're able to get predictive outcomes based on this. So here's a real interesting one. Who's going to be the Democratic VP nominee? Now, I looked at this. I, I came into the weekend thinking, I wonder if it's going to be a two-woman ticket. But the problem with a two-woman ticket is it doesn't, you know, when you, you look at this, you see Josh Shapiro at 28% and Roy Cooper at 27%. Josh Shapiro is the governor of, of uh, Pennsylvania. I think Roy Cooper is um, uh, is from Kentucky. Don't hold me on that. I'm just I'm I'm pulling that up out of out of my 59 year old memory. But um, if you take a look at this, why is Hillary Clinton not on his? Why is Gretchen Whitmer not on at the top of this list? And 
what's happening here is the folks at Polymarket and they've done their research. If anybody's going to do the research, it's going to be people that are putting their money on the line. And what they believe is they want someone, um, they want someone as the VP nominee that's more of a, a centralist, someone that's more moderate. And so they think that by they think that by uh, uh, putting two women at the, on the ticket, that it might be a bit too progressive. And so that's what that's what the predictability model is telling us that it's going to be, uh, you know, someone that's more of a moderate and someone that would best um, complement Kamala Harris or whoever the Democratic nominee may be. All right. Finally, you look over here at the third one that I brought up. So who's the presidential election winner of 2024 right now? And these are these change a lot based on bets, based on uh, news that's coming out. Right now, still has Donald Trump as the presumptive winner with $41 million already bet on this. Now, what's interesting is these things go up and down. So it's possible, for instance, that, you know, if you look at um, at uh, the way Joe Biden's uh, numbers were moving, it was somewhere between 50 and 75 percent. So it's possible that you could bet on Joe Biden leaving the Democratic, uh, you know, uh, exiting the Democratic race at 50 percent and then going against that bet at 75 and taking 25 in the middle. So there's a lot of things that are happening in this predictive model. But I wanted to share with this with you real quick just to show you um, where the money is going in terms of all kinds of things. I mean, they were, you know, last week they were talking about uh, um, whether Trump was going to talk about his ear at the Republican National Convention. There was a there was a bet on that on poly market. So anyway, um, enough about that. Now I want to go into the what I wanted to talk about with this video is how we can look at the volatility of the market. Now the volatility market, you can look at the VIX, that's V I X, or you could look at the VIX futures, which is V X X. Any way you slice it up, the VIX is actually going to be uh, a a market barometer of volatility for the stock market. Right. And when I say a stock market, I'm talking about the S&P 500. Now, this is a weekly chart of the VIX that goes back to 2023. And you can see down here, we see these these areas down here in in the low teens. And, and in this case, below 13, it was it was at 12, uh, below 12 and a half during May, June and July. But we do see areas where we erupt up and then back down. This will happen uh, during that, um, uh, you know, that that selling may go away by in November. It's, we're talking about stocks. So this would be a, a mirror image where during that, those, um, uh, you know, as we lead up into November, typically we see the markets go higher. And that's exactly what happened last year. August, September, October, we jumped up to a high of 22 half. And then we jump into November and then the markets and then the VIX drops back down. And then, of course, you know, we, we see these patterns where they typically kind of go up and down to a, a greater or lesser degree. Let's look at um, a snapshot of what's happened really uh, for this year. This is a year to date chart of the VIX. And you can see how um, as we were coming into February, March, April, we were kind of moving higher. But this was a quarterly spike that we saw that happened um, in the month of April and May. Uh, a lot of this was tech driven, but we did see a spike in market volatility. And then after April, that hit, you know, we got out of that, that uh, Q1 earnings spike and we dropped back down. Now we're spiking up again. Part of this is Q2 earnings, but part of this also, especially what happened in the last two weeks, has to do with forces outside of earnings. And I think what's going to happen is now things are going to quiet down and we're going to go back to just what's going on in earnings. But I want to also share with you what's just happened in the month of July. The month of July, we've seen the VIX uptick 30% for July. And that's coming off the, the bottoms down here around 12. But if you look at what's just happened in the last couple of days, all right, this is uh, this is Monday, this is last Friday, this is last Thursday, et cetera. And you can see the, you know, you've got this uh, coming out of the RNC. And more importantly, more and more calls for, for uh, President Biden to step aside. And of course, now we see what's happened since then. But uh, a, a fairly high VIX that's now heading into what I like to call the sweet spot of earnings. So looking at all of those, you know, we, we now see that um, uh, not only I wanted to share with you the predictor 
of what's going on with news, but I wanted to share with you what we look at at long, intermediate, and not so much short time uh, market volatility. So summarizing this, I want to mention three points. Long-term market volatility, we could look at predictability using seasonality. Uh, sell and may and go away is, uh, is also a way of looking at market volatility, which typically goes higher from May all the way up into October. And then vice versa. When the markets are seasonally bullish, which is between November and April, we typically see volatility drop. Now, medium-term volatility, well, it can be predicted using earnings patterns on individual stocks. And finally, short-term volatility, it's typically unpredictable. Breaking news uh, comes with it uncertainty, and uncertainty is just something you cannot repeat.